Real YouTube is win the tournament. This YouTube is won a big tournament. Actually, you know what? Relative to the monstrosities I have been creating, that actually wasn't so bad. Uh, anyway, hello everybody. I actually recently won the largest official Pokemon tournament of all time, the Charlotte Regional Championships. And I know I don't post on this channel so much anymore, but I thought like, ah, oh, this is a good opportunity to kind of sit down and, and react to it, um, especially before the full edited video goes live. I thought it could be fun to kind of sit down take a look at it. And um, yeah, just like, I don't know, like basically show you all the turn by turn analysis of what exactly was going on. So first and foremost, let's pull up the match here. Where is it? I've lost it. Here it is. Okay, cool. So let's just go ahead and pull this up here. Um, what we're going to want to do is that's me. Hey, hey, it's me. Um, oh yeah. First thing that I want to note is that this shirt is a lot more blue in person uh, for whatever reason with the lights. I call this my teacup shirt. I think it's technically like um, I think it's technically like, like little like blue trees or whatever, but to me, it looks very much like porcelain. So anyway, it's a lot, it's not like that much more blue in person, but it looks mostly white here. The blue is more pronounced in person. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So this is my team. Let me remove my, actually, let me, you know what I can do here? Why don't I, let me just, let me just, there we go. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. That's odd. That's great. Okay. Anyway, uh, two wolves. This is the team that I brought to Charlotte. Uh, there's a lot of important context that you need to know going into this match. Oh, I, I don't like being on this side of the screen. I feel uncomfortable. I feel like I'm not in my home. Also, um, I slept on my neck really, really badly like a week ago and it got better day by day. And then yesterday I like jumped into bed because I was so excited to lie down and now it really hurts again. So if my, I can, don't know if you can tell, but I, I feel not very comfortable. It's actually, it's actually a huge pain. I've been a lot of discomfort. So if I, if I seem physically a little weird, they seem physically a little weirder than normal. Now you know why. Anyway, let's talk about my team. So, Urshifu, Incineroar, Fluttermane, Phrygiraf, Ogremon, Hearthflame, and Rillaboom. These are the six Pokemon that I am uh, using. They're very, very strong. Uh, a couple of notes here. This is my... I'm in, in the finals here, which is, you know, what we're talking about. For the whole team breakdown, I'll, I'll cover that in the main video, and a, a bunch of stuff is already up on the Patreon. But um, for the whole, like, great... I, I don't really want to do, like, a whole team review here. That's not the point of this video. But for this matchup... This is really interesting because I'm going up against a player named Nicholas Donnelly. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. I might have butchered it. I'm sorry. Nick, if you're watching, my bad. Um, anyway, this is our third time playing this tournament, which is the absolute maximum you can play in a single tournament against one other player. And both of the prior sets went to three games. Um, so basically in this matchup, there's a couple things that you need to know. This is my team. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, Nick's team really quickly as well so that um, you can get an idea of the matchup. So on Nick's side, all six Pokemon. Oh no, I need to move my face again. All shoot. Come on. Wait a second. Before we jump into the battle, we have to talk about today's video partner, NordVPN. Nord is a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. VPNs create an encrypted tunnel for your data and protect your online identity by hiding your IP address. Nord helps keep you safe online by protecting you from malicious cyber attacks like phishing and DDoS attacks. Nord is having a special right now where every purchase of their two-year plan will receive four bonus months on top. This includes all plans, standard, plus, and complete. And you can check out these plans by going to nordvpn.com slash bonus wolf. And if you're on the fence, Nord offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can give it a try and see if it's for you. Go to nordvpn.com slash bonus wolf and check out all their great offerings. Thanks again to NordVPN for being today's video partner. Now let's get back to that battle. On Nick's side, all six Pokemon can come. Um, we've played six games thus far in the tournament, and he's brought all of his Pokemon at least once, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely he's brought them all at least once. Now, the last time that we played, Nick basically started off the set by using, like, Tornadus stuff up front, like Tornadus. Or is that even right? I don't actually remember... But he, he he basically in game three of the final set that we played, he led with Ogre Pond and Ursaluna. Um, now that you have an idea of his Pokemon, let's go back to me. Let's go back to me and let's talk about my team again. So in this matchup, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. Um, I can never bring Fluttermane here because my Fluttermane is the Calm Mind variant. Well, it's not like it's a common variant. I was using this weird Calm Mind Fluttermane, which is really good in certain matchups. And basically, like, it's not... It's really good in some matchups, and it's basically unbringable in other matchups. It's really bad here because it's not very good in Trick Room because it's speed booster energy. It's not very good against Tornadus because it sets up the Tailwind, and then, yeah, it can just be a huge pain in the butt. 
Um, and it's also really not good into Ursa Luna Blood Moon because even if you calm mind, you're still taking so much damage from Blood Moon and Hyper Voice that like it's not really worth the investment. So I basically can never bring Fluttermane here. So I have to choose to bring some combination of Frigograph, Urshifu, Incineroar, Ogre Pond, and Rillaboom. Um, this is a really difficult matchup for me. Despite the fact that I won both other times we played, this is a very, very hard matchup because uh, my team just doesn't have resistances to a lot of Nick's big attacks. So the most obvious one is the Ursulina Blood Moon, whose ability lets it hit ghost types. I don't have a single Pokemon on my team who can resist a normal attack, either with the Terra or like naturally. So I have no resistances to normal, which is a huge problem because the damage from uh, uh, Urshifu, no, Ursulina Blood Moon is just completely ridiculous, right? Um, on top of that, um, I also don't really have very good resistances for the clear amulet Iron Hands. Normally what I would do against Iron Hands is I would I would try and use like Incineroar and Rillaboom to use Fake Out, Incineroar's Intimidate ability maybe, but there's this clear amulet in play as well, which makes things really difficult because I can't intimidate. And importantly, Nick has uh, his own Ferrigaraph, which is a really big problem because half of my, like I have so many priority moves in this team, just looking at the team at a glance, Aqua Jet, Fake Out, Fake Out, Grassy Glide, and Grassy Glide, that's five priority moves, right? Uh, on top of all of this, Nick's Ferrigaraph also has Trick Room and Imprison. So my Trick Room option is like going to be questionable. Um, and Ursa Luna is really slow and Ferrigaraph is really slow. Uh, my Fake Out is shut down by Armor Tail. Uh, Grassy Glide is shut down by Ar Armor Tail. Aqua just is shut down by Armor Tail. Um, I have to worry about Tailwind. I have to worry about Trick Room. I have to worry about Ursa Luna Blood Moon, who I can't switch into. I have to worry about this Iron Hand, who I can't switch into. And by the way, it was revealed in an earlier set that... Oh, wait. What I, I I will eventually learn that it was a wait. Hang on. I forget. I forget. But I'll it'll come up later and I'll remember. It's fine. Anyway, so that's a lot of the context going into this match. Is that it's really really challenging and there's a reason why both other sets, even though I narrowly won, they were both three games. So going into the finals, I realized that, oh yeah, there's a couple other things. So because I've played two sets against Nick at this point, I basically realized like, you know what? Like this is not a player who I'm going to be able to make predictions against. Nick was playing in a way that was like very difficult for me to kind of get a, a handle on. And so basically what I realized like was that if I tried to play a game about like out predicting him, it probably wasn't like, it would just become too volatile and I, it wasn't something I was super comfortable with. So I wanted to basically just play the set without making really any predictions because I just figured that that was the best way to go forward. Um, yeah. So going into the first game here, I, I have a couple ideas. Urshifu can be really good. Urshifu, I, I had a lot of success leading Urshifu and Ferrigraph when Nick would lead with Tornadus um, because it immediately put, like, in order to outspeed the Urshifu, Nick would have to Tailwind or risk taking the Urshifu attack, and then I could set Trick Room up if I time things correctly. So... I believe in game one, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure I want to do Urshifu, Ferrigraph, Incineroar, and Rillaboom, though I'll need to kind of confirm that. I think I, why do I feel like I had Ogre Pond? Anyway, let's just jump into game one. You know a lot of the, the additional context, and I'll pause if I need to give more. So this is the thing that I didn't want to see. Ogre Pond and, and um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it was the other set where I led. Yeah, so so I, I know which Pokemon to bring at this point. Basically, um, this lead is really, really scary. I've got, I, I've got Incineroar and Urshifu in the back here. Um... Because the idea is that with uh, Ogre Pond and Frigraph lead, I'm able to handle a lot of different uh, leads from Nick. I'm able to immediately put a lot of pressure on with the Terrifier Ivy Cudgel. Um, I need to be careful using my Terra too early because Nick does have the Urshifu Dark, which will one-shot my Frigraph through Protect. So I need to watch out for, for that. I might need to save Terra Fairy. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a really, really dangerous lead from Nick because... Um, uh, he's got follow me plus Ursaluna Blood Moon, and I don't have any way of resisting the normal attacks, right? So this is basically guaranteed damage from Ursaluna if Nick wants it. Blood Moon, if it Terra's, will KO either Pokemon. It will KO uh, Ogre Pond without the Terra. Uh, also, there's the option of Terra Fire on Nick's side with like Terra Fire follow me being an option um, to take the Terra Fire Ivy Cudgel if I want to go for it. So there's a lot of things at play here. Uh, very, very importantly, this is going to be one of the most important dynamics throughout the set. What you need to know is that Nick's Ursaluna and Ferrigraph are both faster than my Ferrigraph and Incineroar. And so the reason that's relevant is that Ursaluna is actually can naturally be slower than Ferrigraph. Its base speed is actually lower because Nick has Tailwind on his team. He's invested a lot of speed into the uh, Ursaluna. Um, and so what that means is that Trick Room going up roughly favors me uh, as long as I still have Ferrigraph and Incineroar around. So inside Trick Room, uh, Ferrigraph and Incineroar are faster. Outside of Trick Room, his... Ferrigraph and Ursaluna are faster. So 
this turn one, there is a lot going on. For like, I can go for um, I have a lot of options I can go for here because basically, if we look at the KO pressure, um, Nyx Ogre Pond is threatening with Terra a KO on both of my Pokemon. Nyx Ursaluna is threatening a KO on my Ogre Pond without Terra and my Furigraph with Terra. Um, my Ogre Pond is threatening a KO on, on, on Nyx Ogre Pond and a ton of damage to his uh, Ursaluna. And my Freegraph isn't explicitly threatening any damage, but it is threatening set to set Trick Room up. And if Trick Room goes up, uh, again, the speeds work in my favor, especially if, if we take a trade, right? Where like Nick takes out uh, Ogre Pond and I, I take out Freegraph. So to me, the problem is that what I'm worried about here is something like uh, using my Terra and attacking into the wrong target. Where let's say I go Terra Fire with my Ogre Pond and Nick goes and I attack into the Ogre Pond and he spikes his shields and I lose him on. Um, but if I attack into the, the Ursaluna and it protects, I could also take a ton of damage from the Ogre Pawn or like, yeah, just end up in a, in a really bad spot really quickly. So to me here, even looking back at this, like I don't really, oopsie, I don't really think that there's a right objective, right play here because my Pokemon are under so much pressure from this offensive combination. Um, my number one priority here is actually to clear the, um, the Ogre Pawn Hearth Flame if I can, because I've got Urshifu in the back who can close combat the, the Ursaluna to deal with it. So my main priorities here are to preserve Ferrigarath and um, to take the KO on the, on the Ogre Pawn. So in this spot, there isn't really a clear right move. I think like even with the benefit of hindsight here, you can see I'm considering going for the Terrifier Ivy Cudgel and just trying to take the kill right away. But again, that's really risky because getting that, that uh, wrong is really, really, really devastating. So here, I'm going to go for Spiky Shield and switch to Incineroar. Um, the idea here, I think, is basically, like, I'm worried about the Terra Fire from the Ogre Pond, and I want to bring in Incineroar to be able to, like, uh, intimidate down the Ogre Pond, scout for a Terra, scout for a Blood Moon into my um, into my Ogre Pond, because then uh, Nick won't be able to do it twice in a row. Um, yeah, so I bring in Incineroar here. I think, like, I don't think it's a great play, but I was just trying to make a play that wasn't going to lose me the game. Sure, and wanted to try and, like, scout for a Terra and get more information. So... Um, yeah, here I'm going to go for a spiky shield as Nick ter uh, terrestrializes. This is going to be the Ursaluna turning into a normal type, uh, to boost his damage output. This was definitely Nick's favorite Terra in this set. I think he might've done it. It might've been all three games, uh, in this set. I, I guess we played nine games total spoilers. Um, yeah, because he, we played so much. I forget which set, like what happened in which set sometimes. So I, was, I switched in spiky shield. Nick goes for follow me. And this could go really badly because this is blood moon into the, um, into the Incineroar, things get really, really dicey really quickly, but it's just Hyper Voice into the, well, both. Uh, and fortunately, with the Terra Normal and the Life Orb, uh, my Incineroar is going to take a ton of damage here. You can see it takes over 50%. And so this turn has gone extremely badly, where I do have Fake Out Pressure, but of course, if Nick wants, he can just protect with both Pokemon here um, to... Um, to just, like, nullify the Fake Out Pressure. And then I'm basically in a similar position as I was turn one, except... Yeah, it's like worse because I gave up 60%, like 55% of my Incineroar, right? So in this position, I'm threatening Fake Out, but of course, there's always the threat of the um, Ferrigaroff switching in. So I have a couple plays I can make here. I can go for Fake Out into the Ogre Pond and Terra Fire Ivy Cudgel into the Ursaluna. This play isn't so bad. It covers uh, if Nick decides to switch Ogre Pond into Ferrigaroff and attack, but it's not super great against um, the against the, like, protect both Pokemon to stall the turn of Fake Out, which is a completely reasonable play, in my opinion. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, okay, I feel like he wants to just protect with both here, right? Because then next turn, there's no counterplay to follow me Hyper Voice or, or follow me Blood Moon. Um, and it just continues to advance his position. So I think, okay, well, he, like, I think he's kind of likely to go for um, the the Protect Protect. And so I don't know if I really want to, like, Terrify or Ivy Cudgel here because... Yeah, if I do that and I get it wrong, then I'm down to Terra, and then I might lose both Pokemon, and then I might lose the Urshifu in the end. So, like, I didn't really want to Terra here. So in the end, I said, okay, well, if I'm predicting predict protect, I know I said I wouldn't protect, uh, predict, but I was, I was, I, I'm already at a deficit this set, so I feel like, yeah, maybe I have to. I'm on the wrong side. Sorry, I'm blocking all the HP. My bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I guess it didn't really matter for the first turn of the match. Yeah. Um, so I basically was thinking, okay, well, if I if I expect protect protect this turn, then maybe my best play is to go for Swords Dance and switch into Frigoraph because then next turn I can go for Trick Room and um, Ivy Cudgel at plus two to take out the uh, their Ogre Pawn, and then I'll at least like have a decent like I'll have Trick Room up, I'll preserve my Terra, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
But I see like basically a very, very bad thing happen, which is that Fergraf switches in. And the only reason for Fergraf to switch in here is if uh, Ursaluna is attacking. So here I just go for the Swords Dance and it's really bad because I was trying to use the Fake Up Pressure to get the Ursaluna to, to protect, but it doesn't work at all, right? Like I take a huge Hyper Voice here. You're going to see my Ogre Point always survives this, but I mean with only 18 HP left. So yeah, like not very much at all. And my Fergraf, like if you think about my Pokemon right now, I've got Ogre Palm with five, like, you know, 7% left. Fergraf with 30 something and then Incineroar with like 40 something and I, I have the only damage I've done this game is two it's two turns of life orb I haven't damaged my opponent yet and I've already lost over 100% of my team's total HP in fact I've lost close to 200% of my team's total HP uh so yeah that's really really bad so at this point I'm thinking well this has gone very, very badly. The only way I'm getting back into this is kind of like assuming that I can get uh, my opponent to make mistakes. So I decided to just attack the Ursaluna here because again, I'm trying not to predict uh, like Nick one way or the other. And so I'm not going to predict him to protect. And I feel like, okay, well, uh, if Nick goes for something like, oh, important. Yeah, very important. Oops, what just happened? Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Come back, come back. Hello. Okay, hang on. My whole computer is like freaking out. Okay, so Fergraf's only attack here is Dazzling Gleam, um, which means that it's like, not it can't just like protect a Hyper Voice and do a ton of damage, right? So here, I'm thinking, okay, I want to target down the Ursaluna because I need to get rid of it. And in a worst case scenario, like if Ursaluna protects and Fergraf goes for Trick Room, I'm just going to count on Psychic picking up a KO in Trick Room because again, the turn order right now is my Ogre Pawn, Nyx, Ursaluna, Nyx, Fergraf, my Fergraf. So I can use this turn to get the Hyper Voice up and get the Throat Spray active one way or the other because... Fergraf at least isn't in any danger here. So I'm going to, I always Ivy Cudgel the Saluna here. I also think based on how Nick has played the other sets that he's not going to protect because he just didn't protect very often. And I think that the threat of like him protecting my plus two Ogre Pond, taking out his Fergraf and then like being down a Mon with no, like nothing to show for it, I think is pretty scary to him. So I go Hyper Voice and um, Ivy Cudgel here because I want to get the Throat Spray active as soon as possible. And I also want to get some chip on this Fergraf um, because yeah, both these things are really important uh, to winning the game. Um, so Nick is thinking about it here. He's probably considering whether or not he wants to protect, uh, importantly, plus two Ivy cudgel is, um, I think n not exactly the same, but all, uh, basically close to identical to the same damage as Terra fire Ivy cudgel with the plus one boost. Um, and so I've seen that like in a, in a previous game that plus one Ivy cudgel is about 90%. So since Nick is at 80%, I'm very confident that the Ivy cudgel will KO here. If I go for Ivy cudgel and it doesn't KO, then I just lose the game. But, um, yeah, I have no choice. So I get this turn, I guess, correct. Uh, Ogre pa or Ursaluna goes down to Ogre Pond's um, Ivy Cudgel, which is good. I mean, I'm now I've taken out one of the main damage threats, but again, almost all my HP is gone, which is <laughs> really bad. Uh, and this turn, you see Hyper Voice come off. Now, keep in mind, my Fergraf is slower than Nick's Fergraf, so this confirms that um, it is going to be the um, it is going to be Trick Room this turn because otherwise, Nick's Fergraf would have moved first. Uh, so Trick Room goes up. Um, so, I mean, on the whole, it's not so bad, but I do have this Ogre Pond now out of position and Cinnaro's taking a ton of damage and Fergaraf uh, is like kind of low HP as well. So this is a little bit spooky and it is Urshifu who's going to switch in here. Uh, Urshifu Water. Um, and so in this position, I have the plus two Ogre Pond, but I'm like, listen, it's in Trick Room. It's gonna, I, I don't know if it's going to go down to a Dazzling Gleam. I'm not familiar with the Calc, but I kind of feel like it will, right? So I decided to switch out and go for a Hyper Voice here because... This way I won't lose a Pokemon and, and I, uh, I'll be able to still preserve a lot of kind of what, um, my overall like good position here. Nick has already Terra'd, so I, I have that in my favor as well. And I, I don't think my Furgraph has enough, enough HP left to take a Wicked Blow if I Terra. So um, there's no use wasting my Terra here, especially with the Dazzling Gleam coming out. So I decided to switch Ogre Pond out here into Incineroar because I, I think that this is a safe enough switch into like into Incineroar and I need to make sure that like I'm pacing things correctly with, with Urshifu in the back still. Um, so yeah, here I go for Hyper Voice. It's plus one. It's going to do a lot of damage to both these Pokemon. Actually, a ton of damage there. Um, as the Furgraph hits the Citrus Berry and the... Let's see what happens here. It is a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it doesn't do very much to either Pokemon. That doesn't do nothing either. Uh, and Wicked Blow comes out and picks up the KO on Furgraph. So now the score is back to three to three, but I have uh, like really low HP Ogre Pond and Trick Room is up. So Urshifu is in a really good spot at this point, but the problem is that the, the Trick Room is still up for a couple turns longer. Um, I, I basically think about this one because I don't really want to go into Scarf Urshifu this early, but at the same time, like, I don't know if, um, I really don't know if I, I like, I can't go into Ogre Pond because it might just get KO'd 
Uh, by Dazzling Gleam. Also, it could just get KO'd by Sucker Punch now that my Frigoraph is down. I, I have to keep that in mind that I'm susceptible once again to Urshifu Sucker Punch. So I just had to go into Urshifu here. I am thinking about it. Yeah, I like I want to go into Ogre Pond because I don't want Urshifu to come in, but I, I basically realized like, okay, um, if I go into Ogre Pond, it's just dead weight. So I have to go into Urshifu. But the problem here is that the Ogre Pond on the back has follow me. So this probably, I, I think I watched the commentary back and I don't think people, and I, I saw the chat and people were confused by this play. What I am worried about here is Urshifu protecting and Furgraf just being knocked out. That's what I'm really afraid of. Um, so my option, the obvious play here is to go for Flare Blitz into Urshifu and Surging Strikes into the um, Furigaraf. But the problem is if I do that, but does he? Yeah, Flare Blitz into Urshifu, Surging Strikes into Furigaraf. But the problem is that if I do that, um, what happens? If Urshifu protects, then, then Urshifu is protected. I Flare Blitz it. Uh, and Phrygraph, you know, goes down to the Surging Strikes after Dazzling Gleaming. Now the Ogre Pond comes back in, and there's nothing stopping, like... Wait, is that what I was afraid of? Hang on. Oh, yeah, now the Ogre Pond comes in, and it's threatening a, a Woodhammer KO on Urshifu, right? Because I'm, I forgot that I was Grass-type, or that I'm Water-type for a second. Um, Sorry, this is probably a little confusing. Just bear with me for a second, okay? Think about it. Urshifu protects, okay? Can you all see my mouse? You can't, right? Wait, hang on, I gotta move the, the recording software so I can see what you can see. You can't see my mouse. Oh, okay, now you can see it. Okay, so Urshavu protects. Incineroar has to target Urshavu because if it targets Furgraf, then Urshavu will take a KO here and um, then I'm still losing to the Ogre Pawn, right? So Urshavu protects. Incineroar attacks, blocked by protect. Uh, Furgraf does Dazzling Name, does some damage, whatever. Surging Strikes KOs Furgraf, okay? So now it's two against three. Still three turns of Trick Room left? Two turns of Trick Room left? Three turns of Trick Room left? Uh, three turns left, right? Uh, Ogre Pond comes in, right? And now Ogre Pond can just safely wood hammer here and Sonora can take the KO, yes, but if uh, Urshavu, like Urshavu switches into my Ogre Pond, it dies to wood hammer and then um, like if Sonora KOs the Urshavu, then I, then Urshavu sent back out, Ogre Pond wood hammer again, kills Urshavu and then I lose or if Sonora parting shots, then I still take like the close combat, like I, then, I, then the fake out doesn't even work, right? So Basically, in this position, I'm thinking, shoot, if Nick protects here, I'm kind of hosed. Like, it's not over, but, uh, like, I, I can't, I don't think I can risk that. And so, basically, what I started thinking is, okay, well, Urshifu's in a really good spot. All I need to do, really, is make sure that the uh, Ogre Pond doesn't come in when there's too many turns of Trick Room left. So, um, I decided to go for Flare Blitz here because I have to, right? And here, I go for Terra Water and U-Turn because I'm trying to deny the, like, get Urshifu out, waste a turn of Trick Room, be able to go for Protect, and... Yeah, overall, just like make like trying to lay the amount of like the turn where Trick Room actually um, goes down here. So I go for a Terra Water, and I, you know I'm thinking about the Surging Strikes. I, all, everything I just described to you is what I'm thinking about right now. So um, yeah, and Sonora basically is forced to Flare Blitz here because there are three turns left. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because otherwise, Urshifu will do too much damage and take a kill. So I think I just targeted my partner by accident. Um, yeah, but I decided to go for Terra Water U-turn. The Terra Water here is to take less damage from Dazzling Gleam. I thought it was not super likely that Nick used this turn to Sucker Punch or into Urshifu, and it's my like his Urshifu is minus one anyway. So yeah, the main disadvantage to this is that I turn off my Dark Resistance. The main advantage is that uh, I turn off my Fairy Weakness. So that's that. Um, but of course, Nick doesn't. He doesn't protect. <laughs> um, he doesn't protect. So I, I could have just Flare Blitz Surging Strikes won the game. But uh, yeah, I like I, I guess I overthought it a little bit there. Um, uh, Dazzling Gleam comes out and because of the Flare Blitz recoil. Oh, by the way, there was actually a better play here that I had that could have won me the game, but I missed it, so uh, it's okay. Um, but yeah, there was a better play here for anyone curious. Maybe you'll maybe you'll see it in the comments. It's pretty sick though. Anyway, um, I go for a U-turn, and this is kind of a worst case scenario because now, actually, no, this isn't a worst case scenario yet. I because and there's a reason. So here I'm thinking, okay, well, like that didn't go perfectly, but the thing is, again, keep in mind my incinerator is slower than this Frigograph. So now there are two turns of Trick Room left. Incineroar can knock off into the Furgraph for the KO, and um, I can spike, I have, I, again, there's another really cool play I can do in this scenario, but I'll, I'll skip it for now. Um, I can spiky shield with my um, Ogre Pawn, so I knock off, take the KO, spiky shield with Ogre Pawn, um, and then even if Nick KOs Incineroar there, then uh, there's one turn of Trick Room left, and I can go for Surging Strikes and Ivy Cudgel, and Surging Strikes, and then Trick Room will end, and both my Pokemon are faster. I don't know if this makes a lot of sense, I'm trying to explain how to, how to let me let me hang on. Let me let me actually put both Pokemon on the field, right? This is the position, okay? Here's the HP stats. You can see everything. No, pause. 
Here's the HP stats. No, why is this not working? Okay, you can see the HP stats, right? Incineroar KOs Furgraph with knockoff. Ogre Pond protects. If Nick attacks into my Ogre Pond, no pressure at all, like no worries, same situation, right? Um, because I'm I'm uh Oh, I think it was better to spiky shield. I don't think I make this play. Um yeah, basically I can I can knock off into the Furgraph, take the kill, uh, and then Ogre Pond. Um Okay, I'll have to reveal the super cool play. It's fine, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Incineroar KOs Furgraph. Ogre Pond can do one of two things. It can take out Incineroar, in which case my Ogre Pond gets an Ivy Cudgel off, and now with Urshavu and Ogre Pond left, I just Ivy Cudgel Surging Strikes and win the game because it can only KO one. That's the first option. Um, the second option is that Ogre Pond, so Incineroar knockoffs Furgraph, Ogre Pond KOs Ogre Pond. And you might think, oh, wow, like now you're going to lose the game, but... Um, what I can do is I can side knockoff here. This is the play I could have gone for earlier to avoid the mind game to remove the choice scarf, surging strike, and then like I'll be faster and surging strikes the ogre pond and win the game. However, so I thought this position was okay. However, the play that I did not see and that caught me extremely off guard um, was follow me. I didn't think about follow me at all. Uh, and so I didn't consider this even a little bit. And now all of a sudden I'm like, oh yeah, this was all predicated on my ability to, to KO the Phorograph before it got a dazzling gleam off. So at this point, I think I've probably lost, to be completely honest. Dazzling Gleam comes out, it KOs Incineroar, but it doesn't KO Ogre Pond, which I'm frankly shocked by. I feel like it's extremely surprising to me. Um, and Ivy Cudgel comes out, and I'm like, oh my god, if it hits, if it kills, I win. Doesn't kill. Max is deck Ogre Pond. So I guess I could have Flare Blitz there to get around that, but I didn't want to die to recoil. So yeah, it was just like some... And actually, if I Flare Blitz the Ogre Pond and died to recoil, I would have died to the Dazzling Gleam. So yeah. And at this point, being fully transparent, I'm pretty sure that I've lost this game. Um, because Ogre Pond will KO Urshavu, and then, um, I think I actually figured it, no, did I figure it out? I don't remember if I figured it out in the moment. Yeah, I think I figured it out at some point during this turn, so uh, it looks like I'm gonna lose, right? Ogre Pond KOs Urshavu, Furgraph KOs Ogre Pond, and there's nothing I can do about it, because Urshavu can't protect it, there's still one turn left of Trick Room, but I forgot, um, what I forgot is that, uh, Ogre Pond's only grass attack here is Wood Hammer, so by spiky shielding, I put, uh, I put Ogre Pond in a position where, if it wants to KO my Urshavu, it has to also be KO'd by the uh, Woodhammer Recoil, and then it's a one versus one as Trick Room ends. So by spiky shielding here, I actually end up in a position where Ogre Pond can win the game. So the loss condition here is that somehow the Ivy Cudgel, whether with Helping Hand or with Dazzling Gleam, does enough damage to KO my Urshifu. And there was a point, I mentioned this at some point, um, but my, or like in a Patreon thing, I think, but my, for a lot of my practice, I ran zero bulk on my Urshifu. Um, but I think actually I wouldn't have died to a crit there, I'm pretty sure. Um, in the end. So yeah, basically I have a little bit of bulk on, on my Urshifu. I survived the double up. Even with a crit, I think I would have survived the Ivy Cudgel. I think they needed dual crits there. Um, thanks to a little bit of bulk. As the trick room ends here, um, and actually the Terra Water ends up being kind of important because the I took less dazzling gleam damage earlier, right? So uh yeah, actually ends up being kind of impactful here. And and now trick room is over. So um it's an extremely narrow game one uh closing, but I, I somehow managed to very narrowly uh, pick up the win. So that's game one. And at this point, I'm like, okay, that was like, I definitely thought I was going to lose at several points during this. Like the turn one went really badly. And then like the trick room turns got kind of wonky. And my, like I took a ton of damage and like, I, then I thought I was going to lose. Cause I was in a, like two, like Pokemon against Ogre Pond and trick room. But then I forgot they had wood hammer. So yeah, I'm feeling very happy that I won game one. Um, but don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to really make some mistakes in game two. So jumping ahead here a little bit here. Here's the game two leads. They're the exact same as game one. And this time, I forget what I do. I think this time I probably learned my lesson and just attack with both, right? Yeah. So I'm going to Terra Fire here because I want to just KO this um, Ursaluna Blood Moon right away. Um, and yeah, I figure like, okay, well, you know, last game I won, but the turn one was really bad. And, and Nick didn't make the Terra Fire play with the Ogre Pond that I was afraid of. So why don't I just go for the Terra Fire here and put myself in a position where... Um, I can just like potentially win the, like not win the game, but get a huge lead on turn one. There is the Terra. So I'm really worried about this being Terra Fire Ogre Pond um, because if this is just, uh, if this is just like Ivy Cudgel into Furgraf, then I lose for sure. But it is the normal Earth Luna again here. So um, Nick, I think making a very similar play to what he did game one. Um, he's going for follow me here, which is great because with the follow me, I know that I've, I've gotten rid of the Ogre Pond, which is one of the biggest obstacles to um, Urshavu. Ivy Cudgel comes out, which is really important. Um... Picks up the KO on the Ogre Pond. Nick goes for a Hyper Voice again. Again, we saw this doesn't... Well, I actually knew that this didn't kill. Um, Ogre Pond is pretty naturally 
decently specially bulky. So, um, yep, I survived both hits. And here, actually, miraculously, I just go for a hyper voice, kind of covering for a blood moon or maybe, I don't know. I just felt like I wanted the boost off immediately. I critical hit and I leave the Ursa Luna with close to exactly one HP. If I had to guess, it's probably like less than, less. Than, I mean, it's less than 5% uh, for sure. So here, this is an incredible turn one because I've, I've KO'd the Ogre Pawn. First, she was in the back. It, it's very likely to be the last, the same four Pokemon Nick brought last game. And in that case, then only Urshifu and, Urs and uh, Frigoraph are really left and healthy that can still do damage. Here, however, I'm going to make a huge mistake. So basically what I'm afraid of here is I want to go for Ivy Cudgel into the Urshifu and Hyper Voice. But what I'm afraid of is protect from the, uh, from the Urshifu and then um, Hyper Voice KOing both. In hindsight, this actually still would have been okay, to be honest, because... Um, then it would have died to recoil and it would have been a two versus two, but I have Urshifu water and incinerator on the back and I would have been able to win that, I think. Um, however, yeah, I just got spooked. So I, I kind of overthink this one and I'm like, oh, I don't want to play the mind game. You can see I almost hover Ivy Cudgel Hyper Voice, but instead I decide to go for Ivy Cudgel Ursa Luna and Hyper Voice. I think that's what I lock in actually. Um, yeah, I have a lot of regrets about this specific turn. I think out of the entire set, this is probably the, I mean, it's the worst turn that I made all set. Because I saw, I like got freaked out by one specific option. And yeah, look at how quickly I lock in. I, I still have 30 seconds left. Right? Yeah, there was no need to rush into this. So let's take a step back before you see what actually happens. For anyone curious, having thought about this play, the correct play here is to go for Ivy Cudgel into the Urshifu and protect with Frigoraph. It's a little weird to protect in front of Urshifu, but basically what this says is the only way that Nick can KO both Pokemon here is by... Nick has kind of two options here. He, he's not going to protect both because that does nothing for him, right? So he can, his options are either A, protect Ursa Luna, attack with Urshavu, in which case the play that, and, and if he attacks into Frigoraph, then um, I, like he gains a ton and I, and I gain nothing, or he can protect Urshavu and attack with Ursa Luna. Um, the correct play for me, therefore, is to go for protect with Frigoraph and, and uh, Ivy Cudgel into the Urshavu, because if Nick does the first option and he protects Urshavu and attacks with Ursa Luna, um, then I lose one Pokemon. I, we trade basically Ogre Pond for Ursa Luna because the Life Orb Recoil takes the kill. And if Nick protects with, um, if Nick attacks with Urshavu and protects with Ursa Luna, then he can take one KO, but he can't take both. And, um, Ivy Cudgel will bring the Urshavu down to Sash, which is a huge help because then, yeah, I can just KO it at any point with Urshavu. And if Nick, uh, decides to attack with both, he can only get both KOs if he, like, ends up with 1 HP Urshavu and 0 HP Ursa Luna because of the Life Orb Recoil and... Um, Life Orb Recoil and the Ivy Cudgel damage, right? So that's the correct play here, but I, I don't see it. Instead, I rush into this weird Hyper Voice play covering for specifically Protect Urshifu when, like, yeah, like, there's no reason to... I mean, there is a reason to do it, to try and get both kills, but it's still okay. Um, and in doing so, I, I basically throw this game away immediately because... Um, Ursula goes for protect, and I effectively doubled it. Um, and yeah, like just a terror, just honestly, one of the just an abysmal play, to be completely honest. <laughs> um, so Wicked Blow comes out into the Frigograph, and I've Ivy Cudgel into the Protect, and all of a sudden, wait, hang on a second. I I, I had this huge lead, I had all the speed pressure in my favor, and now I'm down. I lost a Pokemon for no reason, right? Um, so I'm gonna go into Urshavu here, which again is great position for Urshavu here, and again, I'm gonna make the wrong play. Here, the correct move, in my opinion, is to go for, I don't know, this one's a little, like, less cut and dry, but I would probably say you turn into the Ursa Luna to guarantee the KO and switch to Incineroar, right? But I'm like, ah, the Sucker Punch is so obvious. Let me just get greedy and go for, uh, let me just get greedy and go for for another Ivy Cudgel, try and put this Ursa down to Focus Sash, right? Um, and so I just, you again, I lock in immediately. Nick makes the great play of switching out to preserve Ursa Luna, which could be a real problem later. Uh, not that I think we even get to that point. And goes into Ferragraph. And he just sucker punches. He makes the obvious play. Switching to Incineroar was super, super safe there. Um, but I don't go for it. I just let my Ogre Pond go down. And so I basically went from being up four to three to being down two to two to three. And my last Pokemon can't protect, which means I'm extremely vulnerable in the face of yeah, Furigraph and uh and and Urshifu here. So I go into Incineroar. I didn't even get the KO there. Uh Incineroar comes out, and yeah, I've like kind of thrown this entire game away somehow. So basically in this position, I realize I'm probably gonna lose because. Well, I mean, it's a little bit obvious, I think. Um, because Nick's, even though I, I intimidated the Urshavu, it, it, Nick has helping hand on his Furigraph, so he can just helping hand close combat KO Incineroar, and there's nothing I can do about that. So 
here I'm like, well, uh, I guess I surging strikes the photograph here. And basically I think like what I need to hope for is, um, the fact that like, maybe that maybe I can live the close combat, like minus one helping hand. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. There, it didn't really matter what I do with Incineroar, but I think I think it makes sense to try and break the sash here. Helping hand comes out. I gotta calc this because I, like I mean like I am really bulky, right? Surging strike comes out. Let's see here. First hit activates the citrus berry. Um, yeah, if the citrus berry were gone, then yeah, maybe I'd have a chance. But I almost wonder why did I even U turn? You know what I mean? Like why even U turn there? Why not just surging strikes the the um, Ursula Luna? It probably wouldn't have made that much more of a difference. But yeah, like why? I don't even know why I U turn. Anyway, I, I do enough that um, Fergraf is gonna go down in one more hit. But um. Yeah, he just goes for close combat and one shots Incineroar, which is really bad. Um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm down one against three. Now, technically, this game is still winnable, um, believe it or not, because what I can do is uh, there's two ways that I can win this. The first is that Nick goes for helping hand this turn uh, into the Urshifu, and I go for surging strikes, get the KO because of the defense drop, KO the Ursa Luna the next turn, and then win the, the 1v1. The other way is that um, Nick goes for... So this turn, Nick goes for Trick Room and Close Combat. I KO the Frigoraph. Ursa Luna comes in. I go for Surging Strikes into the uh, Ursa Luna. I KO the Ursa Luna. Nick Close Combats again. And then he goes for Sucker Punch and I survive. And I wasn't aware of this calc. Like, I didn't know off the top of my head if I would live that. But I thought about it and I was like, eh. Like, minus one Close Combat plus minus one Close Combat plus minus one Sucker Punch. That's three chances to crit. And I don't, it might just KO anyway. Like, Close Combat is really strong. I don't know if I'll survive all three of those hits. And so I basically decided that the better play was to hope that Nick made a mistake and went for helping hand because the surging strikes into the Frigograph was so obvious. So here, yeah, like I, I do think about it a fair bit, but in the end I say like, okay, I think I only win this if Nick goes for helping hand. I see that he doesn't go for helping hand and I realize I, Nick realizes too, he does a little fist bump here and surging strikes, it looks like it might get the kill. It's going to be close, um, but it, it just barely hangs on here. So it, it, even if, even if he had gone for helping hand, I would have lost, but um yeah, I don't know. In hindsight, I don't really feel that bad about the play. You can see the close combat does, uh, how much is that? 76 damage. So 76 plus 76 is like, or it would have been, yeah, I might've survived, honestly. Like in, in hindsight, with like with the benefit of hindsight, I definitely could have survived here, I think. Um, but I like, I didn't know at the time, right? If I knew the exact damage ranges, then I could have made a better play, but I didn't know. So um, yeah, and here help, the trick room goes up and at this point game is over. So now I'm feeling kind of bad because... Uh, I definitely had the tools to win the game, but I I blew it, right? I, I feel really dumb, actually, because, like, I had such a huge lead after turn one where I not only took a KO, but I also, like, put one each, like, the main sweeper at one HP, and Nick only had a Focus Ash Urshifu and Fergraph left to do damage, and I, like, recognized in the moment that, like, I, I absolutely should have been able to close this into a win, but uh, I'm not going to give up, obviously. Like, I still have one more game to, to try and win, and, and in the moment, I'm actually feeling... Like, obviously, I'm a little, like, I feel kind of dumb because I obviously just threw away a game that, like, I knew that I should have been able to close out relatively safely. Um, but I also don't feel that bad because I'm like, well, you know, I, I like, kind of feel like I should have lost game one and I only barely won that one. So, like, I feel like the person who should have won each game was reversed where I think he should have won game one and I should have won game two. Um, yeah, this is probably a roll, by the way, the crit hyper voice. Like, so that had gotten the KO. I mean, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I can't be complaining about that. Uh, so let's skip ahead here. So anyway, for game three, I think about it a lot and I'm like, why am I even leading Fregraf? Like, it's not even like, like my goal is to close with Fregraf to try and win the game eventually with Fregraf. Um, and I don't really see a reason to, um, to, yeah, to, to be, to be leading it here so recklessly. So I, I think about it and I'm like, you know what? I, I feel like the Pokemon I'm bringing are correct, but Fregraf should be the sweeper and Incinera really isn't like doing that much here. You know what I mean? Like, it's really not like, it's not like being the hero or anything. So maybe I should just lead with Incineroar, right? Uh, I threatened Fake Out from like from turn one. Maybe I can like do something fancy there. Um, you know, maybe there's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's like just better things that I can do here. And so I decided to lead with Incineroar and Ogre Pond, which is a, a minor like change up here and would be really bad against certain leads that Nick could do. But I feel confident that after the first two games, he's going to do this one again, especially given he just won. So here... In hindsight, I think I probably should have fake outed. Uh, I think the correct play is to fake out the Ursa Luna and Terra Fire and Ivy Cudgel the Ursa Luna. But I, once again, I'm moving really quickly. I think this is like a, a good time to VOD review. Like, or like this is something helpful about VOD review as you can see your mistakes. I do at least back out here. There's not really a reason to parting shot in all honesty, but there's honestly no reason to parting shot here. This should always be fake out and Terra Fire Ivy Cudgel into the um, Ursa Luna, especially given how Nick has played and especially given I already tried my little swords dance trick once, Nick is even less likely to protect. So by going for fake out and Terra Fire Ivy Cudgel into the Ursa Luna Blood Moon here, 
Um, I basically am able to punish the any play that's not protect, right? If Nick switches a Pokemon out, then so whatever something coming in takes an Ivy Cudgel, which is really bad for him. Uh, if he decides to go for like follow me and Terra like he's been doing, then I just kill, I fake out the Ursaluna, get the flinch, kill the Ogre Pond, game winning position almost immediately, right? Um, and if he switches into Ferrigraph with the Ogre Pond and Terra's with the Ursaluna, I still do so much damage that like I probably still take the KO on the Ursaluna anyway. It just takes a, a turn longer. So in the end, like the position is much, much better for me, I think, if I go for Fake Out and Terra Fire um, Ivy Cudgel, but I go for Parting Shot for some reason. Again, not really sure what I was thinking here. Um, and we can skip ahead here. Here's the Terra. Here's my Terra. We can skip this. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely should have fake out it here. I think that I, I was too like in the I was too in the weeds when it came to the fake out mind game that I didn't think about the bigger picture. So Nick's gonna tear here as well. Again, if this if, actually if this is the Terra Fire follow me, the game would probably be immediately over based on the play that I made because I went for parting shot and Ivy Cudgel, and that would mean that I didn't get the KO, and then also like Ursula could just take an Earth Power KO or a Blood Moon kill if it wanted. And yeah, it'd probably be over immediately. But Nick just goes for the follow me here, so it didn't go that bad, all things considered. Um fake out again would have won me the game probably immediately, but uh, it didn't, it didn't happen. Obviously I go for the Ivy cudgel into the ogre pond. Um, I pick up the KO on the ogre pond and Nick is going to fire right back this turn with his own, uh, Ursulina blood moon. Who's faster than an instant, um, here with blood moon. And, and when I see this, I think that Incinera is going down, but it's actually ogre pond, which I think probably looks pretty bad as a spectator, but I, I don't actually mind losing ogre pond here. I actually kind of think it's good to keep Incinera alive here. Um, um, uh, because in Trick Room, I really want Incinera to be around. Like, I mean, basically anything that wasn't, I guess either either option was fine there. Um, and Parting Shot's going to happen here as well. So Parting Shot, it does give me the switch out, but it, it probably would have better just go for Fake Out here. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, Parting Shot allows Instant to switch back out. And and I assume that the Pokemon in the back are the same Pokemon that Nick has been bringing every game. So um, I'm going to send out Urshifu here. Um, I feel like maybe in game two, I thought Iron Hands might come. But anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, Urshifu comes out here. So this is not bad position at all. I've got, I've got Urshifu into position. Um, I can go into either Furgraph or Instant here. I go into Instant because I think there's a good chance that Urshifu Dark switches in here. Um, and if Urshifu Dark switches in, I would much rather have, um, I would much rather have, uh, Incineroar on the field than, than, um, you know, anything else. So Furgraph is the switch here, which is definitely scary. Um, However, actually, I think of everything that could switch in here, I was the least concerned about Ferrigraph. And you can see, I just lock into close combat within literally one second because, it, like, if you look at Nick's team, his back, he has three options for back Pokemon. Urshifu Dark, which is the most likely, Tornadus, which is the least likely, and Iron Hands, which is the middle ground. Um, but given that Urshifu Dark did so well last game, I'm, like, almost positive that the last Pokemon is Urshifu Dark. And it's not like, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves, folks. It's, it's not like he can protect his... There's a Luna in front of close combat. Um, I want to get a knockoff here because like it's the best way thing I can do to get rid of Frigoraf's health. Um, because of this, like getting rid of the citrus berry as soon as possible is just super valuable to me. So um let's see here. Um yeah, I think in this position, like I think this play looked pretty flashy. I know people were like, oh, we just close combat it, but I didn't really see a reason to do anything else, to be completely honest. Like, there's like there's no defensive counterplay to Urshifu in this position because Nick doesn't have a fighting resistance with, with, you know, the Pokemon that he, that he's brought, uh, to this game. So, and it's not like I am even in danger of getting KO'd by Psychic here because Ferrigraph has Dazzling Gleam. So close combat takes the KO on the Ursuluna Blood Moon, which is really good for me. At this point, I'm like, okay, I have a, a very real chance of winning. Um, and knockoff goes into the Ferrigraph, which is super nice. And Trick Room goes up. So I feel good that my last Pokemon is Ferrigraph. However, there is a, a very real danger here. Um, and that is that I could just get completely swept by this, um, this Urshifu. So here Urshifu comes out. It's focus slash Urshifu trick room. And we're at full turns of trick room and I actually make a mistake this turn. So I, I, I like, I don't really want to switch here because I need for to close this game out. Right. Um, I guess, you know, I guess what I could do is switch. And I, I, I think there's a, there's a really good reason to just go for a knockoff in close combat here. I think like there's, it's a very good play in my opinion. Um, I could switch into for but I think it opens me up a little bit to, I don't know, actually. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe maybe there's a better play here, but I, I just decided to go for close combat and knockoff here because my thought process is that if Nick overpredicts here and he goes for the close combat into Incineroar taking it out, then he'll have one HP um, Urshifu in the back. Like, that's all he'll have left, and I'll have Ferrigraph, and Hyper Voice close combat is a guaranteed win, and um, yeah, like, I, I didn't really want to switch here, like, because I thought it was too risky. So um, I'm thinking about going after the Urshifu here because it's the bigger threat, but I think what I'm afraid, maybe I should have just 
gone after the Urshifu, but the Frigoraph doesn't have Protect, so I think I just wanted to get rid of it. Um, maybe I should have gone after the Urshifu here. Helping Hand comes out, which is a great play from Nick, boosting the damage output even further of Close Combat. Um, Knockoff's going to come out here, and it is going to fi finish off the Frigoraph. It looked like it might have been close there. I'm not sure if that was a roll. It depends on his spreads. Um, and Nick is going to go for Close Combat this turn, and it's going to take out the Urshifu. So, um, what am I saying? Yeah, so Urshifu goes down and out to one versus two. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've got the guaranteed win. Not guaranteed. I win this game unless Nick gets a triple protect. That is the that is the one way in which I can lose. The odds of a triple protect, the odds of a double protect are one and three. And the odds of a triple protect are one and nine. So the way I'm like, okay, I win this game 26 out of 27 times. And there's I have no more options left. Like Trick Room is ending. If Nick makes it out of Trick Room without taking damage, he'll win. If he doesn't, then I'll win. Um, my double up will KO for sure because I mean it, yeah, it, yeah, because he's dropped his defenses and hyper voice a single target. So here's the first protect. Uh, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I was kind of hoping he would just attack. Um, flare of blitz does nothing into the protect. Hyper voice does nothing into the protect. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, he's got to get two more of those. And I, uh, to be honest in this moment, I was like, I'm going to lose. <laughs> I like fully believed I was going to lose this game because yeah, I was like, okay, he's going to get the triple. I just, I, I'm, I'm so sure he's going to get the triple. I've got two turns left. So uh, yeah, I like lock in hyper voice flare blitz. Think about it. Protect fails. Um, <laughs> and yeah, flare blitz hyper voice is going to pick up the KO. You can actually see me reacting there. Right? Cause I mean, at this point when I saw, when I saw the move fail, I knew I'd won. So um, yeah, it was a really difficult set. Um, and it's funny to watch back because even like, you know, I won the whole tournament, but even watching it back, I see so many opportunities where, um, I just like made plays that were suboptimal or could be better. So it's just like, it's, at least for me, it's a good reminder that like, you can always be better. You can always be improving even in, even, you know, when you're winning the biggest official tournament of all time, you can still be better. Right. So I think that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it was a good set. Um, for sure. I, I, it was like really difficult to play somebody for like three times in the same tournament. That was, uh, challenging. Um, cause there's a lot of like mind games going on. I think that's, I think that also probably not to make excuses, but I think that probably impacted the quality of my play a little bit as well, because I was like, Nick and I had our own little meta game going on, you know, in terms of like what Pokemon were being used and kind of the plays that we were making. So I think it was like really disruptive to my usual flow because, um, yeah, like it's just, it's such an, I've never done that. I've never played the same person three times in a tournament before. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I hope you thought this was interesting. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel and, um, yeah. GG's. See you all. My next uh, tournament is at EUIC in April. So uh, I'll see you all there. Hope to have another good performance. Okay. Bye-bye.